Raypack, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, please do not attempt to apply these instructions on your own. This is another presentation of Raypack's Boiler Bite-Sized Bits. Welcome to another Boiler Bite-Sized Bit. In this presentation, you will learn how to set the PIM dip switches specifically for the MVB and Xtherm family of boilers. The PIM dip switches are in that little recessed box on the platform ignition module, commonly called the PIM. This is easily accessible in the junction box behind the front panel. These are the eight dip switches for the PIM. We will discuss each of them in the next few slides. A handy thing to remember is in most cases, without a building management system, the typical setting for the PIM dip switches are number three, four, and seven on, all others off. PIM dip switch number one gives the operator the option of defining the temperature differential or to allow the VERSA program to determine the best differential for the system. Auto differential is always recommended here. The VERSA program will optimize based upon the system inputs to the best differential temperature to avoid short cycling. When it is necessary to run at a very high temperature that threatens tripping the upper limit, you can use a manual differential setting ranging from 2 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit, split evenly above and below the target. Dip switch number two only comes into play when PIM dip switch number five is on. If number five is off, PIM dip switch number two does nothing. If PIM dip switch number two and number five are on, then the boiler will be looking for a volt DC signal from an external controller like an energy management system for direct drive function. With dip switch number two off and number five on, the boiler will run to target temperature. This only applies to single boiler systems. Firing rate control from an external system will not work in Cascade. A Temp Tracker Plus is an example of an outside driver that could be used here with dip switch number two on. Dip switch number three controls the post purge option. Post purge allows the pumps and the cold water protection systems to run for a bit after the burner shuts off. This extra 20 seconds of pump runtime gets the residual heat out of the combustion area so you do not trip on a high limit accidentally. The default time is just 20 seconds, but it can be adjusted from 20 seconds to 20 minutes. PIM dip switch number four is an example of some helpful Raypack engineering. With PIM dip switch number four on, the boiler will cycle the pumps and cold water protection if present after a period of 72 hours of inactivity. So say you're in shoulder weather like spring or fall, and you get a week of warm weather where the boiler does not need to fire. You don't want the pump to seize up from inactivity, so this system helps to prevent that. After 72 hours, the pumps will run for just 10 seconds, just to keep things working properly. During these 10 seconds, the display will show exercise. PIM dip switch number five needs to be on to engage dip switches number two and number six, as they all support energy management systems. When driving the boiler from an external controller like an energy management system, also known as a building management system, then turn on dip switch number five. The energy management system will connect up to ports 13 and 14 on the low voltage panel. If not driving from an energy management system, leave dip switch number five off and the VERSA system will drive the boiler. As just stated, dip switch number six only comes into play when dip switch number five is on. Here is where you select what kind of signal type is needed. On indicates a four to 20 milliamp signal, while off indicates a zero to 10 volt DC signal. If not using an energy management system, leave dip switch number six on the PIM off. Dip switch number seven is another example of some cool Raypack engineering. Turning on number seven enables freeze protection for the boiler. It works like this. If the temperature drops below 45 degrees at either the inlet or the outlet sensor, then the boiler pump will run for a bit, drawing some heat from other areas in the system, 
until the temperature is higher than 50 degrees at both sensors. If the temperature continues to drop and gets below 38 degrees at either sensor, then the boiler will fire for a few minutes until both sensors are over 42 degrees Fahrenheit. This process will override a soft lockout, but not a hard lockout, as that would be dangerous. PIM dip switch number 8 controls the commission test. This is a handy tool for demonstrating that the high limit is working properly. With dip switch number 8 on, the boiler will run to 20 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the high limit to force the high limit shutdown. Once complete, power off the boiler, turn off dip switch number 8, and turn the boiler on to clear the fault. Here is the summary for PIM dip switches on the MVB and Xtherm boilers. For a single boiler operating on the Versa system, as in not on a building management system, and plumbed primary secondary, turn on dip switches 3, 4, and 7. Leave the others off. This will enable the post purge feature, allow for pump exercise, and enable freeze protection. Again, that's turn on 3, 4, and 7. And that has been another Boiler Bite Sized Bit. Look for more Boiler Bite Sized Bits from Raypack. Raypack. Engineered to perform. Built to last.